There are some who would consider it the greatest accomplishment in cinema history. They didn't did they feel that way about the Lord of the Rings trilogy in general. Return of the King won a billion Oscars, and there were Oscars that were more for the trilogy than for the individual film, The Return of the King. In my opinion, the finest film in the trilogy is The Fellowship of the Ring. I outlined why this was in a couple of previous videos on Fellowship and Two Towers. Return of the King maybe. If I couldn't choose Fellowship and I had to choose either Return of the King or The Two Towers, yeah, I think I would go for Return of the King. As much as I revere the Battle of Helm's Deep, I think I slightly prefer the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Oh, maybe not. But nevertheless, just the, the, the rush and the high of conclusion and climax in Return of the King, the that, that sense of overarching significance and, like, this is the end of the Third Age and the start of the Fourth Age. There's something magnificent about it. And yet... There are a couple of problems. Obviously, we all, no one really loves that Doex Machina, that is the ghost army. Um, and also, I suspect that I'm not the only one who feels this way. Uh, I always was a bit... Like, I don't really care that, about the... Like, in the Fellowship of the Ring, we don't really give a stuff about... Aragorn having to reclaim the throne of Gondor from of Vazilda abandoned years and untold centuries ago. Two Towers, it's barely talked about. And then Return of the King, all of a sudden, like Aragorn's not only just, you know, the a powerful warrior who is, you know, good at leading people into battle, he's like, oh no, he he's the central character of the series in a way. And it's just like, oh, okay. I guess. I don't know. It, 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 it's more elaborated upon in, in the novels uh, before you harp on me about that. I know. I saw the films first. Look, I was born in 1996. Yeah, so I did see the films first. And so th there's always been this this feeling where I don't think... I've had where I, I think the films just kind of decided in the last movie, oh, no, Aragorn is actually the central character of these things. You know, it's like, oh, okay. That's fine. No, it is. I'm going to name allowed an event which I am very happy is not in the film trilogy. I don't know how people will feel about this who are devotees of Tolkien's Legendarium, especially in its original literary form. Hear me out. I don't think the scouring of the Shire is very good. Tonally, it seems to t completely disrupt the rest of the trilogy. Again, you might be saying, oh, it's just because you saw the films first. If you'd read the novels first, you'd have loved the scouring of the Shire. I have read accounts online of those who read the novels first who are not that fond of the scouring of the Shire and if they had to choose would prefer a, a trilogy or, or even or at least don't blame Jackson for leaving it out and feel as though it would at least have been tonally inappropriate for the films. Think about it. Like, it, it's, I don't know if you can possibly argue it would have been appropriate for the films. Like, imagine Christopher Lee's Saruman kind of escaping and being like, I'm going to... Get my revenge with those hobbits. I'm going to turn the Shire into an industrial, disgusting, hellish allegory for the destruction of the English countryside. And Grima Worm Tongues hit him as well. And I'm going to rename myself Sharky, and no one will really know who I am. And then the hobbits kind of come back and they're just like, wait a minute, what? The, the, the Shire's turned into this horrible monstrosity. What's going on? Saruman's behind it all. It's like, really? Saruman? Like, uh, I would have been okay with the scouring of the Shire if it was like a, like just some hobbit who just went greedy and then, and, because and, that's kind of a thing. Like when Tolkien came back from World War One and he saw the changes occurring in his society, well, you know, it's not like it was some Nazi had, had come over to England and then been like, oh yeah, I'm making some changes. It was, England was rotting from the core. So it, it, it'd be interesting to have a Hobbit be the villain. Because there are no villainous Hobbits other than Gollum in the trilogy. Hobbits are portrayed as quite benign. So it'd be interesting for Tolkien to explore the, the pathos of a Hobbit through a villain as if Sharky was just an evil Hobbit. And then we have enough number of a memorable character in the trilogy rather than... Saruman, who's arguably a more interesting character in the novels, considering he's a separate faction to Saruman, to, to Sauron, rather than his servant. In the Bakshi film, they named him Aruman to avoid this sort of thing, calling Sauron Saruman and vice versa. 
uh, Peter Jackson saw the Bakshi film first. I suspect that's why he made, which is where Saruman is a servant of Sauron rather, just outright. And so I think that's why Jackson chose to make that the case. I think he thought it was more fluid that way. It, it might be. Return of the King is mostly that good. I, I sooner reserve the adoration toward this film, toward the trilogy in general. Her as an individual film, yeah, Return of the King. By the time the oily fonts arrive, you think this is the coolest fucking film. This is this hasn't been topped yet. To some degree, right. And just on a final note, beginning the film, opening the film with Gollum's origin story, you could not have opened the film in a superior manner. Because Gollum had become an iconic character overnight within the, the release of The Two Towers, and now this is kind of Gollum's Godfather Part 2, if you will. I'm still so happy that this film and trilogy exists. It really is a blessing that I almost feel as our species doesn't deserve at times, and Peter Jackson worked as hard as anyone ever has on a motion picture with this trilogy. I, I salute him eternally.